Building in a Small Town, where we're talking to entrepreneurs, community leaders, policymakers, and more to find out how they're building things in small towns. I'm your host, Shelby Smith. small town podcast. Today I am joined by another relatively local, you're not in Collins proper, but you are like just just down the road. hop and a skip over. <laughs> yes. So I have Kimberly Wilson Turner of Frosted Cakery based in Rhodes. We call it Rural Rhodes. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> of course. Is this your first podcast? I've actually done a, another podcast before this, but it's it's always fun to have conversations with other awesome. business owners, so I look forward to it. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so I uh, just want to start out like where you grew up, not far from here, but you didn't stick around here. So tell me a little bit about that whole story. So I am born and raised in Colo, which is just six miles straight north here on Highway 65. Um, my entire family is still basically in Colo, like, um, but born and raised there and graduated, went to college at Ellsworth um, for my nursing degree and then met a Marine and he swept me away to uh, Pensacola and we kind of lived a lot of different places. Um, he was a helicopter pilot in the Marine Corps so we lived in Pensacola, we lived in Hawaii, Virginia, uh, North Carolina and then he retired after 20 years and we came back home so that's what brought us back here. We were looking for land, we wanted like um, to kind of be away, you know, have our own space. And so we were watching for land for a few years and found some outside of Rhodes and it's at the end of a dead end uh, gravel road and it's perfect, we love it. <laughs> Amazing, so then did you, my brother's a pilot, or F-16 pilot okay. in the Air Force, so familiar with that yeah. life if we say, did you guys have to go do overseas stints or were you like, he you stayed domestic. We stayed um, in the states. Um, other than living in Hawaii for six years, that as far as that's as far as the kids and I made it. He, of course, deployed to uh, Germany, Spain, Iraq, Afghanistan, um, and let's see. His first one was to Japan. So you know, he was a world traveler. We yes. kind of stayed a little bit closer to home. <laughs> yeah, my my brother's in Japan right now. So. Oh, great. Yes, he they like it. But. Yeah. He's got four kids, 10 and under, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. I feel like you either love it or you hate it, and most of my friends who were stationed there just absolutely loved it, so yeah. that's great. Yeah, I think it's um, it's definitely different. So they, this is their, um, they, like I said, they have four kids. Two of them were born overseas. Oh, wow. So first one in Germany, second yeah. one in South Korea, and then the third one was the first one finally born in the States. <laughs> she was born in New Mexico, and then the fourth one was born, born in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, but so then, and they were, they'd been stateside for a little while because they went to New Mexico to Rhode Island to DC mm -hmm. and then now they're in Japan. So nice. it's definitely a long flight. So oh. go visit them. I've not, I've not been yet. My parents went over Oh, winter, you but... should go. I, you know, at some point make a, make a trip out there while yes. they're there. It'd be totally worth it. I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah. And so I, it's on my list and so we'll see what happens. But Great. okay, so you guys moved back. Um, are you like involved in family business still? Yeah. Are you, like... <laughs> so I definitely come from a, a family of entrepreneurs. My, my dad is a farmer. He farms with his brothers, um, locally here. And, um, he also has an auction business and, uh, my mom has a wedding venue in Colo, an event venue. And, um, my older sister, um, she has a great corporate job, but she also has a side business where she does like a you pick flower farm. Um, so she does that. My brother, he has his own thing. He did carpentry for a while and um, construction. And my younger sister and I do the bar service for um, the, the wedding and event venue. So um, we do that. And then we also help dad in the office when he has auctions. And I do a lot of his social media and upload the photos. And so... Yeah, I'm kind of like in, in a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, of course. So then when you were, um, you know, when you were moving around with your husband and your kids and everything, were, you said you had a nursing degree. Mm -hmm. Were you using that nursing degree while you were? I mean, it, I know it's it's difficult as a military spouse. Yeah. Like you are really at the whims of the Marines mm -hmm. deciding when you're moving, where you're moving, how much yeah. notice you have, right. all of the things. And then 
a lot of people don't realize sometimes you're like restricted on typically in the states you're not as restricted of like being able to get a job as a spouse right but like certainly overseas and that kind of thing so were you able to you know work while you guys were still moving around yeah or? so i um i know right before we got married um in 2003 i, I went down to florida and um, had an interview and had a job set up before we moved um, to Pensacola right after we got married. So I worked at a hospital there and then was able to get a job when we moved to Hawaii. And you know, they say as a military spouse, you're not supposed to be like judged by, oh, well, we don't want to hire her and put all the work into her. She's just going to leave in a couple years. But I never had that issue. Um, was able to get a job pretty easily and then um, started having kids. Our three youngest were um, born there. They they still claim that they're full on Hawaiian blood. <laughs> of, course, of course they are. Um, but once I was um, learned that I was pregnant with our fourth, I was like, okay, it just got really hard to find help to watch the kids because nursing is either early morning or late at night hours. And my husband was always gone. He was gone for more than half the time that we lived in Hawaii. So it was mostly just me and the kids. So it was just kind of hard to um, get the hours in. So I decided to, to stop working when I got pregnant with Tyler so um and I haven't been back and I miss it but it's it's been worth it being able to stay home with the kids so yeah of course yeah. so then you how long have you guys been back what year did you come back so we moved back to Iowa um the summer of 21 so we've been back for about two and a half years okay yeah and then you said you found land so yeah. then did you end up building a house we built a house and my husband has a shop and we're on uh, 12 acres and um I had kind of, I was able to like plan all the, the stuff in the house, which was a lot of fun. It's definitely overwhelming. I know you just read the upstairs and it's a lot of decisions, but um, I love my kitchen. And I, after having a bakery for almost seven years in North Carolina, I was like, I, I was like, I was done for a while, um, kind of burnt out. So I was like, I'm not gonna start baking again. I'm gonna take a break. But then as soon as my kitchen was done, I was like, man, I just really love this space and I just want to bake in it. So I kind of started started the business back up again and here we are. <laughs> so then let's talk about that. So okay. your bakery is not, it's not a new thing then. So you right. started that in North Carolina. Like how did that come about? Were you just restless? Were you like, I have this space. Do we need some extra money? Like I just am bored. What, how did that go? So it, it kind of started back way early on in our marriage when we were in Hawaii, uh, when my husband first deployed, I had just had um, our second child, I think it was, and just, you know, was, I always loved to bake. Um, wasn't always very good at it when I was little, but you know, my mom let me, you know, bake cookies and they turn out terrible. And my older sister would take them out to the pigs and they wouldn't eat them. So she'd be like, oh, they're so terrible. The pigs won't even eat them. <laughs> but you know, I kept baking. But um, I, I started making sugar cookie bouquets just kind of for fun, for friends, for certain events. And then they started asking me to make them for, you know, for gifts. And um, so that kind of kicked that off. And I took a Wilton class in Honolulu, um, just the first one, just to, you know, for something to do. Um, and this kind of was self-taught after that. But um, it just seemed like the, the longer we were in Hawaii, the more people were asking for things. And it wasn't a legit business there, but you know, you just kind of keep things hush hush, <laughs> especially when you live on base, there's so many rules. Yes. Um, but then we moved to um, Virginia and it's like word of mouth, like everybody's friends in Virginia were like, Kim's moving to Virginia. If you need a cake or cookies, just call her. And so um, kind of had some more business there. And then we moved to North Carolina and I had orders before we even unpacked our household goods. So it just, it just got to be a lot. And so I was like, I should probably make this like a legit thing. <laughs> you know, I can only like go under the radar for so long. So um, set up a business and did it out of the, our home for a while and um, really wanted to grow it. So I was doing markets and um, at one of, they have this huge uh, market in Swansboro, or not a market, a, a festival called the Mullet Festival. And it's not the hair, <laughs> although you do see some there, um, it's the fish. And so it's like 10,000 people come to our itty bitty little town and it's so much fun. So we set up um, a stand there as a vendor and um, one of my customers um, owned some space in a shopping mall and she was like, you, you've got to open up a bakery. Like your stuff is great. You just need to do it. And she's like, I have the perfect space for you. <laughs> so, you know, we went and looked at it just to kind of like see and 
do the math and you know I've never like run like a legit business and had a space or a storefront so it was kind of like okay how many cupcakes do I need to sell to pay the rent you know I had literally no idea like there's also going to be insurance and utilities you know I didn't really think about that but I was like you know that doesn't sound so bad um so we kind of just went for it and we signed the lease and um, I think that was early October my husband is super handy so he did a lot of the work kind of getting the space ready and the end of November we opened and um it was it was amazing it was we definitely filled a gap in the community um so we were widely accepted and we grew really fast and it was just so much fun and we were open for almost seven years and and then my husband retired so tried to sell the business but it was right kind of at the end of covid so people were not sure what was going on or you know how businesses were gonna do moving forward what was gonna happen moving forward so had a lot of possibilities and then they would drop out last minute because they were just you know scared which i don't blame them so we kind of packed everything up and brought it to iowa so so you started this the <laughs> legit <laughs> business shall we say uh, my math is right like 2014 yep okay. yep yep and at that time like did your book did your bakery have a focus like was it were you like mainly you know you mentioned how many cupcakes yeah. to take to pay my yep. rent were you right like, very cupcake heavy were you big cakes were you um, you brought me some lovely biscotti yeah. today yeah. like what was your specialty our specialty was um cupcakes mostly that was what was in the case every day um i'd also do like cookies and bars and um i did biscotti um every once in a while um and then we also did custom cakes so that was a big um a big part of it as well but the cupcakes were kind of like it was like a cupcake shop basically and so that was our main focus that we offered every day, but the custom orders were um, really got got big and was a huge part of the the business that took a lot of my time, which, you know, you, I was that was one of the things I was really bad at first um, was time management. Like I would be up there till one, two o'clock in the morning finishing um, cakes for the next day. And um, so that was, that was definitely a learning curve there. It took a few years to kind of learn to say no, <laughs> like I can't, I, you know, I already have too many orders. And so it's a lot of learning. Um, and then just figuring out like the business side of running the bakery is so much more than the actual baking. And so it was a lot. And, and it's no joke when, when people say like owning a business is probably the hardest thing that you will ever do, but it's also the most rewarding. Um, cause it was a lot of work. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Sure. It's, yeah, it's one of those things, unless you've done it, you can't fully appreciate yes. it. I feel yep. like especially, yep. you know, building something from scratch. So, you know, talk to me about that, like the business of figuring out how to make a bakery work. Like what did your, did you have a pricing model? Like what, you know, when you walked into this, you come from a family of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like you hadn't been exposed to at least some of it. Um, I, you know, growing up a farmer's daughter and a very entrepreneurial mother as well. Like mm -hmm. I was always exposed to it. Right. Um, so I think that was very helpful for me going in. Uh, did you, you know, were you, you at least had some familiarity, did you feel like? Um, well, we did some market research um, and went around to like local bakeries in the area just to kind of see how they were set up and what they offered. And, but most importantly, kind of what their pricing was because we wanted to be competitive, but also didn't want to undercut everybody or be like way over um, it'd be the most expensive. So, um, we did a lot of that, which, you know, it's, it's really hard to have to try everybody's cupcakes, you know, and the worst, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a write off. So we kind of figured, um, we kind of priced it kind of in the middle at first. And then as things moved along and, uh, the demand changed, we would like at the beginning of the year, I feel like, okay, is this the right time to change our pricing, increase our pricing a little bit? So that's kind of what, what we did. Um, but it was just kind of a, a guessing game, you know, starting out. And of course, like looking back, I know I way underpriced all my cakes, <laughs> you know, cause you, one of the last things I think people consider is, is your time and knowing how many hours I spent on some of those cakes, those people got some great deals. <laughs> But you know, you live in, and you learn, so. I would say, I think that's fairly common, especially, you know, um, service-based businesses, yeah. product. like, I think we all get it so wrong. Yep. And I always tell people, like, you know, young entrepreneurs or people who are thinking about starting their own business, like, yes, create the spreadsheet, create the mm -hmm. projections, all of those things, but understand that 
everything's gonna be wrong. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. All of it's gonna yep. be wrong. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a plan, but don't get too caught up right. in creating those projections because the reality of running it is just so different. Yeah. I think it's just important to know your numbers, like knowing what, what your actual costs are. I mean, that's a good start at least. And then you can kind of figure out, you know, what you can charge for your time and, you know, what, what your community will pay, you know, because there's, you know, I think there's certain industries where you can charge whatever you want to, but also it, your, where your location is makes a huge difference. Um, we were kind of right outside of Emerald Isle, which is a huge tourist attraction this summer. So we had a lot of summer um, traffic with people who come in from out of town and usually are very wealthy. And um, so we were able to continue to raise our prices and people wouldn't bat an eye. So it's just knowing knowing your location and and having an understanding of your pricing and, and you know, if you're charging too much, you're going to figure it out. Like people are not going to continue to pay you if you're charging too much. But I think we did like a gradual increase and, you know, people understood. And also price of the price of goods was going up. And so you just kind of have to make adjustments and everybody understands that. Like you don't even need to make an announcement. It's just everyone knows. Like everybody's feeling that just with the groceries. So, you know, they understand like your butter is kind of, you know, almost double. So yeah, you're going to have to increase your prices. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes total sense. And so when you first started off in this bakery space, you know, sign the leaf, all that stuff, mm -hmm. did you have employees or was it just you? So, so I did have a, a partner starting out like for the first year, a friend of mine who also baked, um, probably would have never done it if it wasn't for her. Like I would have never like had the courage to just open up a storefront. So um, we did that together and um, so it was just the two of us and we both had young kids so it was kind of like I took the morning shift and she took the, the afternoon shift because she homeschooled and my kids were just like my youngest I think had just started going to kindergarten so it was the perfect timing for that and that's just what worked for us um, but then it was like I had to come back in at night and work on cakes and so it's funny because it's so hard to give up control of things, especially in a business. And so that was probably the hardest thing was um, hiring people. And the first person I think we hired was um, a, just a, a customer of ours who she came in all the time and she was just like, do you guys need help? Like, I'll come do your dishes. And I hate doing dishes, like with a passion. <laughs> so I was like, sure. So she was our, our first employee. And then um, around the same time probably too I think we hired a bookkeeper because that is just not my thing and so to be able to give that up was great I mean it's always hard to like oh now we have to pay her right <laughs> but it was worth it because uh, the time that she could get it done was well worth the money paying her than the hours and hours I would spend trying to figure out you know what where carry the one what where does this go who do I pay when <laughs> so it was definitely worth it and she's wonderful um, and then so I think we just had just a couple for a while and then we were like, okay, well we should probably hire people at least to help us up front, you know, serving the customers and running the register so we could focus on the cakes. And, and so then we just hired mostly high school kids to run the front. And um, as we got busier um, and then eventually I bought my partner out um, a little after a year, I think that we were open. Um, I was like, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I'm definitely gonna need some more help. So a lot of high school kids, and they were great, usually daughters of um, my friends, so I knew they were great already, um, or their friends who, you know, like, hey, she's really great, she would be good. So I always had like a little vetting system. I'm like, okay, here's the people who want a job. Like, you know, probably not like the right way to do it, but you know. You had a pipeline. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> I never, never had any issues, and they always stayed with me until they left for college, and some even would come back in the summer, so. Um, it was great. We didn't have a very big turnover, but um, my initial um, employee, Trish, who started out washing dishes, ended up very soon being like my main baker, my head baker, my bakery manager. Um, she ran the show and she was fantastic and could not have gone as long without her. So she was um, definitely a godsend. She was wonderful. So had some really amazing employees. Yeah. yeah. And that, it, it's one of those things I can totally resonate with the, like, fear of giving up the control on yep. the thing. It's yep. just, it's your baby, and you don't feel like anybody yep. can do it as well as you or everybody, and, you know, just letting, letting that control go makes it easier, and then it doesn't limit the business, because then you right. become, you know, the bottleneck of the whole thing. Yeah, so. I, would, I was the worst. It was like, only I can make the cakes, only I can make the frosting, and 
and then it was like, I'm here all day. I want to go home. So it was like, okay, why don't you, you can make it and we'll see how it turns out. And like, then when I had the high schoolers making all the buttercream, which freed up so much time. And I was like, why did I wait so long <laughs> to let them do these things? And, and they enjoyed it too, because it, it made them feel like more of a part of the, the business and helping out more. And so, you know, towards the end, I was coming in the mornings and helping set up, um, kind of popping in and then then that's all I did, you know, and then I would come back in the afternoon maybe and do cakes and so it was just it was very freeing finally allowing other people to do other things in the business. So um definitely encourage people to just let go of the control and, and trust other people. Like you you are not the only person who can do that. Like there are other people you can teach them. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> well so then um you know you had this retail space but then you also had the custom orders essentially mm -hmm. happening do you like just off the top of your head have any idea what your split was like were you like 50 percent like retail people walking in 50 percent custom or was it more like 70 30 um i would say it was maybe like i know i had the numbers you know when we were doing it and looking back i can't remember but i would say it's probably like maybe 60 40 60 being like everyday walk-in cupcakes cookies things um and we would have some little cakes um, sometimes that people could just could walk in and, and grab, but the custom cakes, um, 40% probably. So it was a big deal. It was just, it was just a lot of work, a lot right. of hours. So. Yes. Yep. And so then, then during COVID with all of that, then, you know, 60% turns into, right. you know, 10, 20%. And so adjusting for that. But, um, I'm always curious with people with like brick and mortar locations, like how did you drive traffic? Like what was your, what was your best marketing? Was it word of mouth? Like were you big on social media? Like what, what do you think brought people to the door? I think initially we had a really great following on our social media um, before we had our space um, because we were doing the markets and we had a lot of networking with our military um, friends. And um, so initially and always, I think feel like word of, word of mouth is always your best way of marketing but um the space that we were in the shopping mall was right um kind of in the corner of several businesses and one being the post office and the one next to it was an OBGYN. so you had like people coming in and out of the post office and then you had pregnant mamas coming walking by your door every day like you know they're coming in for cupcakes right Perfect location. so we had great foot traffic as well because of and there was a couple of restaurants and so um i mean i think you couldn't necessarily see it really well from the road because we were kind of tucked back, but because the other businesses that were there, we had constant foot traffic. So that definitely was, was great for us. Yeah. And so then on the custom side, I imagine it was same, same sort of mix, but you also like word of mouth. Right. Have been huge. Yep. Yep. And, and I would always take pictures of the cakes and post them and, um, you know, so that helps too. And, oh my gosh, you know, I want that cake, you know, can you make this for me for blah, blah, blah. So, you know, social media was huge and Instagram and Facebook and yeah. So, and did you find most of your, a lot of your custom orders, were they weddings? Were they, or they, were they just all occasions? Um, mostly birthdays and other occasions. We had obviously a heavy military, um, uh, a lot of military in the community. So we did a lot of, um, retirements and promotions, um, and just like parties. And I did some Marine Corps birthday ball cakes, which were huge and so much fun. And, um, I, the weddings were not my favorite and they're still not my favorite just because of the stress. <laughs> I would literally make myself sick, um, just stressing out because you know, you want it to be perfect. You want everybody to be happy. And I only had a couple of bridezillas and one awful, um, mother of the bride, which after that I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I can't just, you know, it's, it's great. It's fun to make beautiful cakes, but the stress was literally making me sick like every weekend. So I was like, okay, we're just gonna... Thank you, but no. If you want cupcakes, I'll I'll do a cupcake tower and a little six inch cake. But like the big extravagant cakes, I'm done with because it was just too much. Yeah. Ooh. I mm -mm. <laughs> I no. can tell you stories about some of the weddings, but it would just oh, it just it would just make me so sick, just oh, stressing. <laughs> I can't imagine. Nope. <laughs> It'd be a hard pass for me. So then you know you're talking about all this like the decorating and the scale of all of that. You said you were self taught right yep. so where did you go for like inspiration like did you were you, is it just watching other people do it seeing if you could do it like how did how does that happen? well I got I have to give credit to my grandma she she was like the OG cake lady in Colo 
um, Phyllis Wilson. She, I grew up watching her decorate cakes. My dad would take us to the farm, um, which they just lived a couple miles away, but he would go on the weekends and do chores and just drop us off at the house. And so we just sit at the table and watch grandma decorate. So grew up watching her. Um, and then I did that one little Wilton class in Honolulu. Um, but it's just, you know, everybody would bring in Pinterest inspiration. And I was just, I guess, really good at just recreating things. And um, there was a lot of trial and error because some of my first cakes, I look back and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like how could I have ever charged for that? Um, but a lot of those were, you know, I think my very first one, which wasn't even like, I wasn't really trying very hard, but it was when my husband, um, I think is when he got promoted to first lieutenant. It was just this little cake with probably store-bought icing in the can and I had a little helicopter cookie cutter and I just popped it on the top to make an imprint and then got that store-bought green gel icing and squeezed it on the outline. It was dreadful, <laughs> but you know, you got to start somewhere. But I think it's just, just a trial and error and watching videos and playing around with stuff and seeing what you like to do and what you don't and hoping for the best. <laughs> yeah, um, that's cool. So do you then remember, and this can be, I'm gonna ask you two parts on this okay. one. So your pre-legitimate business, mm -hmm. do you remember your first paying customer? I do, I what do. Was it? it was a friend of mine when we lived on base in, um, in Hawaii on K Bay and she asked me to make a, a sugar cookie bouquet for her daughter. She had just had a little girl, um, Gwyneth Rose. So I made some little cookies with a little like buttercream rose on them. And yep, that's what I, I remember. Did she like them? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and then, so do you then remember your first customer when you like opened your brick and mortar? Oh gosh, we had like a grand opening, like we did this whole, you know, marketing thing where you could come to like the sneak peek the night before we open and we had little gift bags for everybody. Um, I don't know if I remember like my first actual paying customer at the storefront. I, that's when I, I didn't think to remember. <laughs> well, and that's, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, and that is sort of a different situation too, right? Like, you know, you had, had been dabbling in this business mm -hmm. for however many years and I'm glad that you remember your <laughs> the Gwyneth Rose yeah. cookies. Um, but yeah, just opening your brick and mortar. I was just curious. It's one of those things I always want to know if people remember their yeah. first one. I know we have, there's a picture that I have when we did our first market downtown Swansboro of our first um, customer and we took a picture of our first dollar. <laughs> so I have that, um, but I don't, I don't remember the storefront one. Probably because it was, we were exhausted. It was crazy, you know, and just on a high of, oh my gosh, we did it. Here we are. Yeah. Here we are now. What? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ready or not. Right. So you talked about it earlier or you mentioned it earlier. Tell me about the burnout and like <sighs> just being like, you know what? We need to be done with this. Um, talk to me how, how, when did you really start to feel the stress and the burnout and being like, man, you know, I used to love this so yeah. much. Like this is pretty terrible right now. Well, I mean, it was probably the last the last couple years of having the, the storefront. It was, you know, the kids were getting older. My husband was still deployed. Um, I, I'm, I don't know, like the exact moment I was like, oh, I'm so done with this. But it was just because it was mostly just me doing the custom cakes. Um, I know Trish and maybe one or two of the other girls would help doing some of what we called our signature cakes, which were just like, you know, any occasion, you could just throw some Oreos on a cake. I mean, not just throw them on there, but you know, make it look nice. Place them nice. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a couple of, um, Trish and one of the other gals could make those. And, um, so that was helpful, but it was like the custom orders were just me. And I mean, there's sometimes where people would ask for just some pretty ridiculous things. And, and if I didn't love it, I'm just, my heart wasn't in it, I feel like. And so, um, I think it was just, we had so much going on at home with my husband being gone. And after so many years, it's just like, oh my gosh, when's this ever going to end? And just learning to be like, okay, I don't have to like torture myself. I can say I'm not taking custom orders anymore. And I know that I, I think I limited it to just a couple on the weekend rather than like eight to 10 cakes. Um, and so that was helpful, but then eventually I was like, well, you know, people aren't complaining too much about only doing like a couple of cakes. I could probably just like stop. <laughs> and I think it was honestly, maybe COVID that was like, kind of like, okay, well, it was a good excuse to not do those anymore. So, um, and then it was just so freeing, not, not having that stress of making everybody's cakes perfectly how they wanted, just like in the pictures. And, 
So I think it was probably COVID that kind of helped me be like, it's okay, you can say no because you can't really do a whole lot right now anyways, so. Right, so then at that point, um, once you stepped away from the custom cakes, then the rest of it, you had the pieces in place for that business to just kind of continue forward and not feel as burnt out on your side. Yeah, it, it allowed me to focus on the things that I was doing that I really enjoyed. Um, we were doing like cake decorating classes, which were such a blast. And I mean, they were selling out and I would like, I would buy as many folding tables as I could fit across my tiny little bakery and how many chairs can I fit? And like, that would be what I would have to cap it off for number of people attending. So we did cake, uh, kids cake decorating classes. We did um, a corks and cakes where people could bring in their own beverage of choice and we would decorate and drink and it wouldn't get crazy, but sometimes it did, but those were so much fun. Um, and then I had requests for people to decorate with their kids. So then I started doing like a mommy and me class and, and it was just so much fun and I really enjoyed doing those. I did a few sugar cookie classes. Um, so I was able to do more of that on, especially on the weekends because I wasn't stuck at the bakery, like decorating all these custom cakes. And so that ended up being a lot more lucrative anyways for me. So um, being able to just focus my time on the things that I enjoyed more was, was definitely worth it. Right. And so I always feel like when people start a business, um, <clears throat> there's so much happening and there's so much going on that maybe you don't realize that I really like this and I don't like this, mm -hmm. but I have to make it all go. <laughs> I have to do it all in order to make the whole thing go. Um, and I feel like it is about that five year mark mm -hmm. where you really start to either love certain parts of yep. it or hate certain parts of it. Um, so when did the class thing come up? Like when did you start being like, you know, I really would like to teach this. I mean, I feel like maybe a couple years in, I started doing the classes, but it was just hard to find the time to do them. Um, and I, you know, I enjoyed them and I was doing a lot of like, um, I was going to locations like I went to um, the Navy Hospital and did a lot of um, classes with the birthing moms because I was able to connect with the instructor there for their their birthing classes she's like it would be so much fun at the end of their class if you would come in and we could all decorate cake so I did that several times um, I would do a lot of um, oh like I would go to a spa and they would do like a, what do you call it when you have like a, like team meetings and um, when you just had your coworkers come together and oh, uh, like a team building. Yes, a lot. I did a lot of team building, so I would go to a lot of businesses and and bring all the cakes and all the buttercream and the tools, and we would do that there. And I really enjoyed that. I did a lot of um, like uh, military spouse group um, coffees and get-togethers, and so that was fun. I really enjoyed doing that aspect of things. So that's when I was like, okay, let's see how we can do more of these like in the shop and. So. Right, so it's more of an interacting with people sort mm -hmm. of situation and not constantly. By myself at 2 a.m. at the bakery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Yes, there's a lot of that. Yep. Um, okay, so then, um, you know, your husband retires. Mm -hmm. Did you, When did you guys decide, now's a good time to move back to Iowa? Like, I know I have this business and like, we'll put some feelers out about like, can we sell it? Mm -hmm. But like, how did that whole decision play out? Cause I got to imagine that was not really an easy one. No, it wasn't. And you know, I knew it, I knew it was coming. I mean, it was crazy for a military spouse to even commit to having a storefront because we didn't know we were going to be there. I think we ended up being there. We were there for eight years, which is and, like, which is insane. Crazy. Like you don't ever hear that. <laughs> we were so lucky and all, I mean, we were in Hawaii for six years. We were in uh, Virginia for four and North Carolina for Eight. and you know I, I tell you if my sister-in-law listens to this she's gonna be really I, know, I feel like really being jealous. a pilot that helps you get to stay places a little longer usually yeah maybe it's just the Marine Corps but yeah, um, it, it, it sounds like just the Marine and Corps the aircraft thing. he flew but um we just had you know not very many options of where we could go but um I know usually it's like 18 months and you're on to the next place yep so when I opened up the storefront like after we had been where we were for just over a year, I was like, okay, well, I don't know how long this is gonna last. And our landlord, you know, started out with just a year lease. Um, and then we kind of, you know, moving forward, we kind of knew we were gonna be there for longer, but um, yeah, it was it was just one of those things where I was like, well, you know what, I've been following my husband around and gave up my nursing career um, willingly. I, you know, it was, I don't resent him for that or anything. That was definitely a choice we made together, but 
um, I was like, you know what? It's just one of those things where I don't know how long we're going to be here. This is going to be kind of fun. I think, you know, we can make some money doing it. And if not, and it doesn't work out, at least I can say we tried and we did it and we had a great time doing it. So that was kind of the motivation behind it. And then never imagined it would turn into almost seven years. So Yeah. So then, but, <clears throat> so then he, he retires. Does he retire first or had you already been talking about like, maybe we need to look at selling this? Like... I knew we want to come back to Iowa. Yeah, I mean, initially we had planned to stay in North Carolina because we loved it so much. But um, uh, the last couple of years, we we're like, you know what? We really probably want to be closer to family because his family's from Southwest Iowa, and um, we just always enjoyed coming home and wanted our kids to grow up, you know, the rest of their childhood around cousins and grandparents. So um, I know probably about a year and a half, maybe two years before he was set to retire, we we're like, okay, we kind of have to figure out what we're going to do here and. I knew selling the business was going to be a process and I had, you know, a handful of people that were interested. It was just a darn COVID just scared everybody off. And, you know, I, I feel like I really did a great job of, of thriving through the pandemic and, and thinking outside the box and I was doing deliveries and we were doing um, online cake decorating classes and making the cake kits. So they'd come in and pick up the cakes and then just watch me on Facebook and decorate. So we did great. We didn't, we didn't suffer through the pandemic. Um, like a lot of businesses, unfortunately did. I know a lot of, um, a lot of the businesses in town had to close, you know, they just, they couldn't do it. And, um, you know, with, with COVID, it was just like, I couldn't get anybody to commit because they were just, you know, unsure the uncertainty of, the economy which you know can't do anything about that yeah and you can't you can't blame them yeah. either you know but yeah okay so then you end up packing everything up you come back to Iowa you found this land yep. you are dabbling in all the other family businesses and you have this brand new kitchen yep. that you love and you love this space so then what so I started out just by making a few things um, my brother managed the Nylons Cafe for a while and so um, I enjoyed, I worked up there as a waitress and enjoyed the heck out of that because, you know, working with people. Um, so I made a few things um, for them starting out and baking up there. Um, and then of course, you know, just having family and friends back here that knew I baked, they were always asking, can you make a birthday cake? Can you make me some cupcakes for this? So I would do it. Um, but I was like, okay, I, I knowing, knowing now, you know, looking back, I was like, I can control the crazy if I do this again. I can, you know, limit what I want to do. I can do the markets and, you know, maybe that's all I do is just the markets. Maybe I don't take any custom orders. Um, so I was like, okay, I can do this, but I'm going to be smart about, you know, saying yes and saying no. Like, I'm going to do better this time. <laughs> um, I am going to establish yes. boundaries yes. and I'm going to yes. stick to them. Boundaries, boundaries. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was like, I think, you know, I told my husband, I was like, I think I'm going to like restart my business and we'll get the kitchen inspected and licensed, which isn't necessary in the state of Iowa with the cottage laws. But I just feel like for me, I feel like it's just nice to be able to say my kitchen is inspected and it's legit, you know, don't have cats laying around, which that's not a bad thing, but we always joke, Trish and I, you know, it's so hard to trust people at potlucks because you just don't know if like their cats were laying around the casserole or, <laughs> you know, so I always have that thought. It always makes me laugh, but I just think it's just nice to let people know and, and knowing that they're they're purchasing products food products from a kitchen that has been inspected by the state and you know so that's why I did that and then um, I told my husband I was like I really want to do markets I think it would be fun to like get a little camper or a trailer or something um, and not just have like I had a pink tent when we did things back in North Carolina but you know the weather was always so unpredictable we had hurricanes we had rain and things would get canceled or they would be like rain or shine and here you are and hot temperatures and your cupcakes are melting and so I was like it'd be great if we could have like something on wheels that I could control the air temperature and so we started looking for little um, little campers and so I found this cute little 10 foot little camper it was in rough shape um, but again, because my husband's so handy, he helped me like totally gut it and make it what we needed and had a family friend um, paint it for us. So it looks really great and, and ended up like, okay, we'll just do markets. Um, so that was kind of the focus of the first year, but of course still had side orders. And But I, I'm, I've been a lot better about, about the boundaries and saying no, but um, 
I just really enjoy the markets and being able to control and bake when I want to bake and bake what I want to bake. So that's been fun for me this time around. And so you started, you got, when did you get the kitchen license? Um, March of 22. Okay. Yeah. So March of 22. So yep. then did you jump right into markets in summer of 22? Yep. So I did the Maxwell market and they, it was every Sunday. Um, May through September and did pretty much almost every Sunday. I mean, there's a few where, you know, we had things going on, but um, I just did the Maxwell Market um, and that went really well. They do such a great job of organizing that um, market. Um, and then the next year I was like, I could probably do, do some more locations because everyone's like, oh, you gotta, oh, I did Geneva too that first year. Um, and that was great. So um, this... I think the weather was awful at both. Mark or both May and September Geneva's of 2022, if I remember right. I at least one of the yes, days. I feel like horrible. yeah, like rain. Yes, yes. And I think and it was both weekends, though, if I seem to remember. I like I there's too many markets to go. <laughs> I, but I just remember 2022 Geneva being like mm, this was awful. I know, I know. We the second day I think was supposed to rain and thunderstorm, and my husband was even like. Let's just go up and hook up the camper and bring it home. Like, it's, no one's going to come out. And it was our best day. Yeah. It was better than the day before when it was, like, sunshiny. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, okay, these people are hardcore. And say, those, <laughs> Geneva, those Geneva market shoppers are some of the most hardcore yes. of any market. I mean, they come into. from Minnesota and Wisconsin. They're and, committed. And yes. it's rain or shine. Oh, yeah. Or they're snow. in their they umbrellas and their rain boots. And they got the wagons hauling all their goods. It's, it's insane. So, props to the Geneva market people who come because I was impressed like we were almost going to load up and head out and I'm so glad we did it because that was our best day <laughs> yeah yeah I'm always like I'm always surprised and shocked at, at their they are devoted yes but, which is awesome so um of 2022 like what was your favorite market like what was your biggest surprise maybe um so the let's see so that so that first year we just did um Maxwell and Geneva and I just, I was surprised at, I mean, being every Sunday, I was surprised at the number of people that just kept coming back every Sunday and um, gained a lot of new followers and, you know, people asking, oh, when are you going to have this flavor and what are you having? And so they were always like looking forward to the different flavors I had every week. So, and it was, it was really fun getting to know the other vendors. I didn't always have the time to go around and like visit, but like, you know, your neighbors and across the way you get to know them and, um, and it's just always great to be able to connect with other business owners and I just I love that too because I love like like the marketing side of things and I just love like talking business with other people and it just it just really gets me excited I'm like oh you should do this and they, so it's always fun to like learn about other people's businesses and see how they're doing and how you can help them and just just in conversation yeah so that first year what were you, you know you said you got to bake what you want to bake yeah what did you want to bake I just um I wanted to try new things and do different things so um, just trying new recipes and changing up certain things and just you know because I always want to be like okay let's try and have like this Iowa State Fair mindset like what's going to be the one thing that I could make you know each Sunday which didn't happen because it was it was a lot it was pretty frequent but I was like I'm gonna go into the season I'm gonna be like okay I'm gonna have like that state fair item that everybody wants to seek out so that was my that was my goal didn't always happen <laughs> but um, like the cake cups where it's literally just like when I bake a custom cake I level off the top because you know when it bakes it kind of rounds up I'd level the top and I use that cake and just throw it in a cup with layers of buttercream throw some toppings sprinkles whatever on top and that's what everybody wanted so that's what I tried to bring as much as I could um, so that was always fun but you know and everybody loves the salted caramel chocolate chip bars and the monster cookies and so it ended up like I feel like towards the end I was just like making the same thing but that's what they wanted so right. that's just kind of what we did yeah so no cupcakes oh yeah always cupcakes okay. I always had like yes. yeah sorry I just figured that just kind of went without saying I always had like yes. at least six flavors you know and tried to change them up um every week and um so that was always fun to be able to to change that up yeah yeah and then so then this past year 2023 more markets I did I probably was a little bit overzealous <laughs> and I signed up for a lot just because I figured you know what let's let's just see you know try some different ones see what works some were disappointing some were surprising um, but now like this 
this upcoming season, I kind of know like the places I want to go and maybe scale back a little bit because my schedule was pretty intense last summer. <laughs> um, but it was fun and, and I, the kids were helping me and so it was it was fun for everybody to yeah. do that. So. so were you, did you go back to Maxwell in Geneva? Yep, so okay. yep. I feel like Maxwell will always be like my number one. Um, you know, I got started there and they, they do such a great job and have such a great turnout. and. Um, so I'll always be my first one that I always sign up for. I've gone back to Geneva. Um, they do such a great job as well. So those two are like my for sures. Um, I did I did Nevada a couple times. I feel like um, I think the weather was too hot, so they had to cancel a couple times. Yeah. So I think I only got to go there once, um, but it was really great. I was in Colo for an event, and you know, being my hometown, I feel like all my Colo people come out, and I always do really well there. Um, we did Bondurant, Ankeny, you know, so some of them were kind of surprising where I was like, I just figured it would be a lot more people yeah. or, you know, but, you know, also as I, I feel like as I ventured further away, I probably had less, um, brand awareness. Yes. I feel like they're like, who's this crazy lady in this little cup, you know, little camper, uh, you know, so I don't know. I think I just need to stick closer to home for now. Well, I so. yes. Um, and it just, it takes a few years potentially and, yeah. and everything else, just figuring out what works and what doesn't. And, um, and outdoor markets are so impacted by the weather, <laughs> so yes. impacted by things that are out of your control mm -hmm. that, you know, something one year can go great. And then the next year it is thunderstorming and it breaks your tent yes. or, you know, like yeah. there's so many things, yeah. um, that I feel like people and customers on the other side do not necessarily <laughs> understand that a three hour market means like a seven hour situation yeah. of set up, tear yeah. down, all of the things. Yes, which is why I don't miss not having a tent. I love having the camper because- you just pull it up. Have a little AC in the back. Yep, my husband just gets me all set up and then he'll leave and come get me at the end. And you know, if it's raining, I'm, I've got shelter. And you know, if it's windy, I'm seeing tents blow by and I'm just in my little camper. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's definitely been a bonus. Um, but you know, I've been there though, I had the tent and, and lived to tell many stories about my husband. It's funny, Trish, the gal that worked with me, she just texted me the other day cause they had tornadoes out in North Carolina. She's like, I need Nick right now to tell me when these tornadoes are going to hit because he would be like, all right, you've got about 15 minutes until this rain is going to hit. So we better start packing up these cupcakes. So it was always kind of a running joke, but he's always been my little personal weatherman. So I could always kind of know like, you know, what's coming and right. when well, to prepare. <laughs> and as a pilot, he's got access to additional weather things. Oh, sure. That, yeah. Know, civilians yeah. didn't necessarily, I mean, yeah. my brother, I've been around and my brother does the same thing. I'm telling you. <laughs> Um, what's happening and when and I'm always like okay I feel like you know yeah <laughs> like yeah you definitely know. yeah so very good so then um, talk to me a little bit about like what your marketing strategy has been then you know since you've been back like your first year obviously there's again there's the word of mouth thing mm -hmm. like your reputation precedes you in many yep. ways yep. Um, which is awesome and super helpful and I always tell people like that I totally agree with you that that is your most valuable marketing mm -hmm. is is previous customers talking to potential new yep. ones. Um, but as you started to then venture into your second year and go a little bit broader with your markets and things like that, um, did you try anything different? Are you looking at trying new things this year to see, you know, what's that? Yeah, I mean, I'm always looking to try different things and spice things up a little bit. I think just being consistent on your social media is probably the best thing that you can do. Um, sharing things that are engaging to get people to comment and share so um doing like uh giveaways i do like a monthly giveaway on my website where i just ship a, a package of biscotti every month to somebody who just signs up um i do ship a lot of things um, i have my monthly biscotti subscription box so i ship uh, to several states with that and i feel like um i'm gonna try i want to try and do like something where um, they can share with a friend or something like a refer a friend type thing. Just, you know, like you said, the word of mouth is just so great. So um, just always looking at different strategies and how to grow and expand my reach. And so I know, and that videos are always huge. Going live is something I need to do more of. Um, I do like box openings for my subscription boxes and share what's in each box because it's a, a surprise. You know, when I ship them, nobody knows what flavors are in them until um, they get it. So um, just, you know, 
being consistent is probably the thing I try to do and then just keep an eye on the trends and yeah. do the best I can. <laughs> and then, so what platform are you like most active on? Are you Facebook, Instagram, both, all? Are you on TikTok? Yeah, I am, but <sighs> I am not that great. Like I need to hire my kids to do like content for TikTok because videos I just take, they take time or I just need, I always forget like, you know, everything is content. You know, I have to remember to record everything. Um, but I'm trying to do better about that. Mostly I'm on Facebook because that's the easiest for me because I'm old, right? We're the older generation, so Facebook is where we're at. But I'm also on Instagram, so I try to be consistent with my stories. And um, and then TikTok, I might have a couple of videos on my TikTok. I don't, I don't even know. I haven't been on it for so long. Um, but yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah, so not on like YouTube or anything like that? No, and that's something that I would like to do eventually. Um, you know, I have a Pinterest uh, page as well with all my pictures and I'm not very consistent at that so I just try to you know not to overwhelm myself because you could literally spend eight plus hours a day just on marketing um, which I love but it's overwhelming so sometimes I'm like okay this is what I'm going to do today I have all these things I need to do and then I do nothing because I'm overwhelmed I'm just and I just freeze <laughs> but um, yeah Facebook and Instagram are where you could probably find me the most the most yep. the most consistently yes anyways yep and then so you know you're talking about you finishing up in North Carolina what you really enjoy doing were the classes mm -hmm. so have you been able to incorporate that back in I mean home base I don't feel like you're probably not teaching your classes at home no not at home um so I use my my mom's event venue um I do in-person classes there I didn't do any during the market season just because it was just too busy um, so I have a kids class coming up this Sunday and an adult class the following Saturday. And I'm going to try to do, you know, at least one of those each month up until the market season and kind of see what my schedule looks like there. Um, but I also have a um, online cake decorating membership group um, where I decorate a new cake design each month, share the supply list and um, kind of go and like go through a tutorial live. And then my youngest son, Tyler, who's 14, um, loves to bake. And so I was like, it would be fun to do like Tuesday with Tyler. So he comes on once a month and he'll just bake, um, like uh, this past week he did monkey bread. Um, so he does a recipe that's you know easy for anybody to do and does a video in that inside the group each month. So it's just a little something fun that when I don't have the time to do it in person, I have that consistent monthly um, decorating group, which I enjoy. Cause I enjoy the teaching aspect and I've always loved the classes. So it's something that I can still do. Whether you know it doesn't work what the weather is, I can just do it right from my kitchen. So yeah, fun. You need a YouTube channel. I know. Oh my god, he's just <laughs> you could do. Oh man, you need a YouTube I know. Channel. I can see like all the uh, you know your brain's just popping. yes. I was gonna say my wheels are turning. I, that would. I just need more time. I need more time in a day. Right. Just don't edit it. Just throw it up. Uh, Whatever happens, yeah. it's fine. People people will love it for what it is, and people who don't love it are not going to be your audience anyway. Yep, that's true. That's you know, true. I think that's kind of kind of the way I look at it with most of the things these days. I lower my barrier to entry yep. because if I you know sit there and think about it too long, or if I put too many demands on it, I think about what can I do on my worst day. Yeah. Not you know a lot of people when they set their goals or. Are like I want to accomplish this they think about it from like what's their best what right. can they do on their best that's day? true versus like I need to think about what can I do my worst day when yep. I just don't feel like it yep. I don't have time whatever I'm gonna shove it out there if you don't like it you probably weren't for me in the first place yep and you just yep. have to start you just have to do it that's, yes. that's the hardest part is just starting start build the airplane while you're flying yep <laughs> I think yep. that's kind of yep. been my strategy <laughs> with a lot of things just build the airplane while you're flying yep um and just hope that you get it before you get the ground, yep. shall we say. Yep. But, um, very good, so then what are you like really excited for in the next 12 months? Like, are, is there anything, is there a particular event? Is there like a particular class? Uh, it can be personal, it can be business, it can be um, whatever. I, my focus this year is growing online. I want to um, maximize my efforts um, I'd like to grow my cake decorating group online. Um, I want to grow my subscription box. Um, I think I mentioned to you in one of our emails, I, I have plans to start a podcast of my own. So that's in the works in the next couple months, hopefully, kind of getting everything lined up for that. 
Um, and then so maybe I can start my YouTube with that, right? You know, upload videos, my podcast, and yeah. So you need YouTube. You'll be my inspiration. <laughs> oh my you do gosh. a great job with that. <laughs> you need YouTube, a thousand percent. Um, it's one of those things that I don't know if it's talked about enough, like in the content creation world. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is, and I'm just not in the right algorithm. <laughs> um, but YouTube actually pays you the most of any platform in terms of like ad revenue sure, yeah. distribution. So yeah. they pay you 53% oh. of the profits Okay, of YouTube. Like that's really that's good. That's really good, yeah. 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 So that's where like it's not, it's, it takes time, it takes effort, oh, sure. it takes consistency, yep. as is anything else. Right. But if you can reach that monetization threshold and get it, and I swear, cake decorate, like you are just, <laughs> made for it well like i to teach i know that i love i can sit and watch like the sugar cookies you know when they're flooding exactly. i can sit and watch those all day and then like the um time lapse cake decorating like that's usually that's what i can do because you don't have to listen to me talk you know and it's fast so it gets done like in a few seconds and you're not like watching me like oh you know fix that little spot because it's like boom, going yeah. through so fast so i do have several of those just not yeah. on youtube <laughs> but see here's a beautiful thing though youtube in the last two years to compete with TikTok and Instagram mm -hmm. and all that stuff where all the short form content yes. has become a thing. YouTube has shorts now. Yes. So all of your stuff can be repurposed. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. I'm just, just, need to, I'm just, need to, just take a YouTube day and just start uploading content, right? Yes, or <laughs> make your son do it. You know what yes, I mean? Like make one of your kids. Yes, yeah, I need go. to utilize my teenagers for sure. Yeah. yeah. And so we, uh, with my son doing the, the Tuesdays with Tyler, he, he's not comfortable going live. Like I go live when I do the cake decorating in the group. He's like, mom, I can't, I just, I'm going to mess up. I was like, but that's what makes it fun. You know, yeah. it's real time. It's like they're sitting in the kitchen with you. He's so funny. Um, during, during COVID, he and I would go live every Friday in our kitchen and just decorate a cake just for fun. And you know, people just fell in love with him because ever since he was a little baby, he, you never knew what was going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> and so he's just so entertaining. And, but anyway, so in the group, you know, he's like, let's just record it and then you can edit it. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Which it's not too long, but it still takes time for mom to edit. Well, my other daughter, who's a year older than him, she's like, mom, give me the videos. I'm going to do a blooper reel. Like, I was like, Argh. like, you gotta be nice. <laughs> But I was like, I think that's fun because I love a good blooper reel. So I need to start having her go through those and, you know, because that would be great content, I think, and get people excited about, you know, the fun stuff we do in the group. Yeah. Know, bloopers and all. Definitely. <laughs> a, a thousand percent. You know, it's one of those things you're bringing joy. Yeah. You know, and I think that's that's really important for just everybody. Right yeah. Now. So your podcast, tell me a little bit more. Like, are you going to do a, are you thinking like cake decorating? Like, bakery focused or you just kind of want to do all over the place well I have always loved the business side of of my business and I always feel like if there were two of me one of me would be doing the decorating the other one would be doing like marketing full-time because you could literally take the entire I mean you could spend all day marketing your business and it still wouldn't be enough time um, so I think I, I would like to focus on the business side of a bakery um, just sharing what I've done, um, just my experience as a business owner. Um, and then, then I'd also probably sprinkle in some stories and, you know, life and I don't know, whatever people want to know. But I think my focus would be the business side of things. Yeah. Yeah. So when are you going to launch? <laughs> so, okay. So my goal, which I have never said out loud to anybody, I would like to launch in March. March is my birthday month. So I thought, you know, that'd be a fun marketing you know idea I don't know so I'm gonna shoot for March I've okay. been kind of going through the process and making a plan and you know I just need to start I just need to do it just need to like I have a microphone and everything I've had forever um, just need to start recording and and you know build the plane while it's flying exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm so here for that kind of plan um, yeah just start the hardest part is starting. Mm -hmm. It really is. It was and everything. Your first episodes are going to be like your first cakes. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Not going to want to listen to them. <laughs> you're going to look back and you're, in, you know, however many episodes down the road and you're going to go, I can't believe anyone listened to this. Yeah. But, you know, it's that's, that's just the way it goes, though. It is the way it goes. And if I have any recommendation, it's lower your barrier to entry. So, yeah. Like, whatever you have, whatever's holding you up of like, I can't do this because I need to edit it. Right. No, you don't. Like, no, you don't. You leave the pauses, you leave the, you know, the background, you leave yep. all of it in there. 
And whoever's going to be your audience is going to be your audience. Yeah, they'll stick so. to the pauses and the, the mess ups and everything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or You're right. Your husband criticizing your questions. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. Um, <laughs> they'll stick with it. So, very cool. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with people um, about your about your business, about what you're trying to build? Um, um, I mean, I don't know. I just, I like I said earlier, I just love like talking business with with people, whether it's baking or or whatever. I, I love like walking around Geneva. I leave my husband in the camper. I'm like, I'm gonna go look around a little bit, do some shopping, and I just love talking to the vendors and you know asking you know how they got started and what they're doing and. I'm like, oh, you know what you should do? And like sharing, you know, unsolicited, you know, maybe you don't want my advice, but here it's a great idea I think that you should do. Um, I just, I love talking to people about their businesses um, and just, you know, helping them see that there's so many things that they could do depending on which direction they want to go. I don't know. I just, um, I think if you're interested in, in starting something, I mean, go for it. Life is short, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you hate your nine to five, I mean, I'm not saying quit your job, but you know, wouldn't you rather live your life doing something that you enjoy and just find a way to make money doing it and figure it out as you go and, you know, ask people, what do you want? You know, are you interested in this? And just to kind of help niche down what you might want to offer. I don't know. There's just, I just feel like life is too short to be miserable. So do, why not do what you love? Freaking amen to that one. Right? The one question I did forget to ask you. Okay. What's your favorite cupcake flavor? Oh. <laughs> My tried and true, I would say, is red velvet with cream cheese buttercream. I just, I don't know why I love it. I just do. I don't make it very often. Um, I mean, I love a lot of flavors of cupcakes, but that's like my number one probably. What's your best seller? Oh, gosh. My salted caramel buttercream is very popular, um, but I have a cupcake called Burn in Love. It's a dark chocolate cake with a little pinch of cayenne pepper and a cinnamon buttercream. And I don't know if it's just because people are curious or, I mean, it's kind of like that Mexican chocolate vibe. It's just, it's different and people love it. It's, it's a good one. So that one's pretty popular too. Gotcha. Yeah. But you, like me, your most popular flavor is not your favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what I get with people. They're like, what's your favorite? I'm like, this one. Yeah. But everybody else likes this one. So. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love that? And I was thinking, um, driving over here, I was like, I wonder how I can incorporate crickets into my cupcakes. Oh, we can do that. Right? We can or some biscotti. In. I don't know how people would feel about that, but like, Halloween. you know, it's like that curiosity factor. Halloween. Yeah. Do a Halloween cupcake. We'll discuss that. Okay, we yeah. can do that. I think it'll be fun. <laughs> I talk, love it. We can talk about that <laughs> offline. Uh, I just sense a collaboration in the future. Yeah. Um, anyways, okay, is there anything else you want to... You want to tell people? I don't know. I, you know, I, I love talk of business. So if anybody has any questions about baking or cake decorating or just business in general, I'm, I love sharing the things I've learned. I've spent lots of money on courses and education just, you know, over the years that I would never tally up to know how much I've spent because I know it's a lot, but you know, I just, I just love to learn and implement it. So I'm, I'm an open book and I love to share what I've learned and help people. So awesome. So then where can people find you? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at frosted Iowa. And my website is frosted Um, and then you can find my biscotti at get biscotti.com. And soon you'll be able to find you on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your podcast. Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> All of the things. Well, thank you so much for coming and sitting down and talking with me today. I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Yes, thank you for having me. This was fun. You're very welcome.